Thank you, Diana. So our next speaker is Janet Barrow. Is Janet here? Oh. Hi, I'm Janet Barrow, and I don't have anything really prepared. I'm just going to speak from the heart. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm just a grandmother and a farm manager's wife. We live on property that is affected by the pipeline. It's not our property. Um, we've lived there for 33 years, and it's uh, almost 10,000 acre cattle ranch. And I, I just have, like, the wildlife are my neighbors. We don't have, like, regular neighbors like most people do. So I felt, when I heard this pipeline was coming, um, I went to the FERC meetings, this um, open house in the FERC meetings, and I wanted to learn as much as I could about it and try and make up my mind and use this as a lesson in government and also be able to speak up, be a voice for the wildlife, the wetlands, the soil, the ecosystems, and such. Um, first, I, I only knew about this because the land was affected. Most people didn't know. And when I look back, actually I think it was in a response to um, the Sierra Club lawsuit, it said 350 people provided comments at these scoping meetings. Now, those scoping meetings were held throughout Georgia and Florida and Alabama, which has a population of 35 million people. So that is one out of 100,000 people that actually knew about it enough and made the effort to go and make comments to FERC. Uh, that is just not acceptable to me, and FERC seemed to be bragging about it that they got 1,200 comments from 350 people. Well, I know I made at least a half a dozen sets of comments. Um, it's just one out of 100,000 people is, is not access acceptable. And if you look in the Florida statutes, it actually says that they encourage local governments to have inform informational meetings to the public about any natural gas pipelines. That's in the statutes, and it says that they're encouraged to do so. I do not, now maybe y'all do, but I don't know of a single local government that held any kind of meetings like this. So, you know, and I started looking into the Public Service Commission and how they paved the way for this pipeline and they um, had some house bill to have expedited approval and such. And here we are in Florida, the sunshine state. And I want to ask, you know, how does it make sense to bring fracked gas from Pennsylvania about, you know, 800 miles or whatever it is down to Florida when we're the sunshine state and two-thirds of our energy, our electricity already comes from natural gas. Um, they have fooled around over there in Crystal River for so many years with nuclear and coal and gas and now the Strom plant and everything, and then those two pending nuclear permits for more nuclear plants. You know, if they would just stick with one thing for a while and not be jumping around, this really upsets me. And it's, it is time to move into some solar, but I want to caution everybody, don't go letting them take good agricultural lands, conservation lands, and timber lands and wild lands in our open spaces for solar farms. I'm glad to have solar. I think, you know, we should have solar in cities like this. Don't be coming to our rural areas and taking that land for solar farms because they're going to impact the wildlife just as much as anything else. But I do want to move to solar. It's, it's the sunshine state. And, and I've learned now there's things called microgrids and somebody that knows more about it, but it just makes more sense to have like microgrids. And I am personally more motivated to get off the grid and, you know, and do what I can to start moving myself away. And in fact, I have like sold some of my bank stocks um, because I don't want to be a part of investing in these banks. So, I've 
looked into all these agencies and I was just as upset as Chris and Deanna Miracle when I saw the same kind of thing going on in Marion County. I looked, I actually read the DEIS and the FEIS, you know, and I tried to, I saw that there are sinkholes that are on the ranch, you know, because I know that property, that are not listed in the EIS and they should have been. Um, and then another one, which was a pretty good sized sinkhole, and they have it, they had it down as a shallow depression that was slow to form. No. Um, so I just, and plus there's a karst window. We're close to Rainbow Springs. And on the ranch, there's another spring called Rock Springs. The state doesn't even have it in the database. And there's a karst window right there that Sable Trail, when they had to address it, they said it was something that occasionally ponds. Well, it always has water in it except for a drought. So they have mischaracterized so many things, and that just angered me. So I tried to contact the DEP and get them to um, just go over their information and compare it to what I knew on the ground. Just, you know, so I, I, call, I, I emailed first and they sent me like a link to, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of documents. So finally I said, well, give me the name of the geologist and the contact information for the geologist who reviewed this data. And I finally got that. By that time, they had issued their ERP, but environmental resource permit. But the geologist, when he talked to me, said that the state of Florida Office of General Counsel would not let him talk to me, a private citizen that was trying to bring information, legitimate information that they had missed, overlooked, mischaracterized and everything. The Office of General Counsel, who I guess are the attorneys for the state of Florida, wouldn't let him talk to me about Sable Trail. Do you know how that makes me feel as a citizen? Now I have, I have even, after reviewing all this, I have less confidence in our infrastructure than ever before. And in fact, somebody, you know, you start talking around, over there north of Crystal River and not far from the Florida Gas Transmission Pipeline, there is a road and there is an actual cave underneath of it where you can see all the way to the other side. Now, Andrea Grover from Sable Trail, she, she brags on how, oh, we've built roads Oh, through this car's terrain. Well, that's a fine example. You go over there to that particular road and you can look through a cave. There's about that much rock, you know, between the road surface and looking all the way through and seeing daylight on the other side. You can see all the patching they've done on that segment of road. I don't have confidence anymore in, in our, our governmental agencies. As for the wildlife, <laughs> bless them, you know, they, they have out-of-state companies that, I don't, that send these young students out to do the surveys, and the stu they're not from Florida, and they go through with tunnel vision, and like I can, this one particular area, I know it's got five different kinds of listed species in it, and they go through with tunnel vision, they, they did happen to see the gopher tortoise burrows, and they found one, um, nest of burrowing owls. But as far as the gopher frogs, the fox squirrels, which we see frequently, and the kestrels, they, they tunnel vision, didn't see a one. There's, there was a nest, of, a fox squirrel nest, in the corridor, and I brought it the, to the attention of FWC, and they had actually marked it off when they were clearing the land. Um, they had marked it off after I brought it to the attention of FWC, and then I went back two days later and it had been pushed down. So about that time I was riding through the property and often we'll see like two to five, maybe six fox squirrels in a day. Well this particular day there were 11 of them and they were all stirred up. The poor little burrowing owl, the one that I see at the nest right now, I don't know if the other one's still there, but he is with, with them doing that uh, grading and now putting the pipe along, and he's just a, oh, maybe one or two hundred yards from the corridor. He is hunkered down. Every time I go check on him, and I try not to disturb him, you know, 
at all. But he's hunkered down. You just see the top of his little head there at the burrow instead of him standing up like usual with his mate and flying around and foraging, you know, hunting, whatever they, they do. And I was so concerned. I called or emailed, whatever. I think I called FWC. I've had many contacts with them. And I said, please stop this construction after like five o'clock. So these burrowing owls can have that time in the evening to go out and do their hunting because that's when we notice them doing a lot of their hunting. And, you know, I still would see Sable Trail working later, Round like six o'clock and whatever. Yeah. And so I'm worried this poor little thing is just gonna starve to death. Um, Cause he can't, he's so nervous. And now not only the grading and the construction, but in the future with the gas going through, that's going to cause vibrations in the ground and who knows. Um, you know, most anything that anybody else has talked about, I could talk about too. I was so upset. And, you know, I am not really, I'm just a citizen. I'm not affiliated with anybody's agenda or anything. But I, I have recently joined two organizations. I'm not typically a joiner, but I joined Walls and I joined Delaware Riverkeeper because they are doing such awesome work. And I went up, I did go up to Washington, D.C. I was the only one from Florida. But I just felt compelled to do it. They were having, a Delaware Riverkeeper was having a people's hearing to hold FERC accountable. So I went up and, and I talked like this, just, I could they wanted me to keep it to four minutes. And I just couldn't. Every time I tried to cut it down, it would get longer. So I just, they had to cut me off and I, I showed them, you know, some, anyway, some information. I talked and, and you know, I, it was well, well received and I met a lot of people. and. So many people from all over this country have these horror stories of dealing with FERC and dealing with these pipelines and these agencies. And it is like, okay, this is not my property that's affected, but it could be. It could be any one of us, our property. And, you know, property ownership is something that we have in this country at this point in time. I've been in agriculture and being a Christian, I feel compelled to be a good steward of the land. And, you know, ordinarily I would have wanted to purchase land and put it into some government conservation program. Um, but now I'm so disillusioned with the government, if, if and when I buy my own land with my native plants and, and just preserve an ecosystem is going to be on my own. I'm going to be real careful where I buy. I am not buying near a pipeline. I am not buying near a utility corridor. And I am going to thoroughly examine the county government of the area where I go. Um, I know there was more I wanted to tell y'all. Um, but, oh, the conservation lands. I gotta tell you about going down to the South Florida Water Management District meeting with Marilee. Uh, they were giving away easements uh, for this Sable Trail pipeline. And so I went, I wrote them a letter. They had it on a consent agenda. And we managed to get it off the consent agenda and have discussion and I was able to come and talk to them. Um, there were a number of concerns, and one of the governing board members, Jim Moran, did finally ask the Sable Trail attorney whether any of this gas could go for export. And that attorney admitted, this is a transmission pipeline, anybody can put gas through it, so it can be exported. Um, another thing that I found out at that meeting that disturbed me is that they are actually mitigating mitigation lands now. Oh. Because lands that were set aside for mitigation of developments are now being mitigated, you know, for, for this pipeline. Uh, and that is a scary running. thought. I went down to South Florida. I used to, I've lived 80% of my life, and I'm not young, um, <laughs> in Florida. 
And I used to go down 27, and it was a nice road. Nobody was, you know, not a lot of traffic. There were the citrus groves and everything. And I went down there in November of 2015, taking that road and the back roads. 27 is all built up. Through talking to various, uh, at various meetings, I think it was in Marion County at the commission meeting, I learned that the projections for growth in Florida are like 30 million people, we're at 20 million now, 30 million people by 2030 and about 50 million people, 50 or 60 by 2050. It's a scary thought. There's such a thing as carrying capacity for the land and we are exceeding it. When I went down to South Florida, what did I see? In flat Florida, mountains, mountains of garbage and you can smell them before you get to them. So we've got some serious problems that mosaic sinkhole um, with the radioactive waste going into it, the Okeechobee situation and the algae, this pipeline through our karst terrain. It's, it's just the overgrowth and overdevelopment of Florida. And I'm, I'm really fed up. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Robin Toon? Is Robin Toon here? Who's yeah. sure who's here?